Hi everyone, I'm Kate with the Learning Labs at Gwinnett County Public Library and today I'm here to teach you another tutorial on Easel. This time we're going to be using some of the apps that are built into the software to create a more complex design with pockets and cutouts that are going to come together to make a puzzle. My materials that I'm using to make the puzzle today are multicolor MDF. You could use a variety of different woods. This is just what I had on hand and I had plenty of it. So this is what I'm gonna be using. It's a great inexpensive material and the MDF from Inventables is child safe. The material has been rated to be safe for children's toys. So if you're making a puzzle for a little one in your life, then you can rest assured that this is a safe choice for that. I will also be using a dial caliper to measure the thickness of my material because it's very important to get an accurate reading on the thickness of your material. And I have my bit that I'm going to be using in the Carvey. This is a 1 16th inch downcut fishtail bit and I will show you in the software where you can look to determine the best bit for the material that you're going to be using. Ready? Let's get started. I'm just going to sign in to my Inventables profile and I am going to open a new project. First thing I'm going to do is change my material settings to MDF and I will select black for this one. That's the color I'm going to be using for the base of the puzzle. The width and length are correct. However, I used my caliper to measure the thickness of my MDF and it is 0.21 inches thick. Okay, now that I've got that set correctly, I am going to import an SVG file of the image I'll be using to make my puzzle. And there it is. It's a lot of different colors of gray because each of these independent design elements is set to a different cut depth. So I'm just going to put them all to uniform about 1 16th right now and we will perfect that cut depth later on. Now I can see already that the outline of the image is not cutting right now and I think that's because the 1 8 inch bit which is the default bit in easel is too large for the level of detail that my puzzle is going to require. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that to match the bit that I have. Now, where I found out which bit I needed to use is right here in bit and material recommendations. So you can just click on that and find the material you will be using. I'm using MDF. So I could use a 1 8 inch straight cut, but I have a lot of detail in my design, so I might need a smaller bit. I'm going to look over here at these down cut fishtail bits, and I actually happen to have two of these in my bit stash right now. It's always a good idea to have an extra bit because they never last as long as we might hope them to. So I'm going to use a 1 16 inch down cut fishtail bit. You could also use the text tool, just like we did in the previous easel video, to make a name puzzle if you wanted to. And you would simply click on the fonts, choose a big chunky font because you want big chunky puzzle pieces, and just type in the name that you would want and follow the directions exactly the way that we're going to be doing it with the library icon. Now you might notice there's not a preset for a down cut bit in here. So we're just going to click on other and we are gonna put in the decimal of 1 16th inch, which is 0 0.0625. And you can see already the rest of our design has appeared in the preview, so you know we're on the right track. All right, let's select all of our design elements and make them a bit larger. Now we're going to go and explore the apps in Easel. And you can find all of the apps underneath this button that looks like a Lego. So click on that. 
we're going to be using the inlay generator. There is another one I want to show you while we're here though. And you would use this one if you were using the text function to create a name puzzle. When you use the text function, all of your letters are linked together as one thing and we want to separate them into individual letters. And for that, you would use the Exploder app. So that's this one right here and you would simply click on it and you can play with the gap a little bit if you want, but usually it doesn't make much of a difference. So I typically just leave it at zero and then hit import. However, I am using an SVG that already has individual components, so I don't need to explode it because it's already been done to this file. So I'm going to go back into my apps and go to the inlay generator. This is the app we're going to use to create the pocket, which is going to be the base of our puzzle, as well as the individual pieces, which will cut out of the different colored MDF pieces to make the insert part of our puzzle. So we're going to go ahead and change the bit size. You always want to make sure that this number matches the actual bit that you're using. And we need to raise the tolerance up quite a bit because we want it to be easy to put the puzzle pieces into their slots. So we're going to change that to 0 0.045. Now this warning is telling us that our design is larger than the work area. However, we're going to be moving part of it to another work plane. So don't worry about it. Just click leave original size. At this point, we can get rid of our original file. I don't want to delete it completely just in case I need to refer to it again. So I'm going to set the cut depth to zero so the machine won't try to carve it and I'm just going to hide it off to the top up there. Now, this gray file is going to be the pocket that lives on the base of the puzzle that we set our puzzle pieces into. I'm going to duplicate my work piece, and in the second one, I'm going to get rid of the pocket and bring down the outline, which is going to cut our actual puzzle pieces. Now, I'm going to go ahead and rename this work piece to Puzzle Pocket. And this one is going to be Puzzle Insert. Going back to the pocket, I'm going to select this shape and I'm going to make it maybe not quite as deep. For a puzzle, you generally want the depth of the pocket to be about a quarter to half of the thickness of the actual piece that you're using. So I'll put it right there in between. Now there is one more factor that we haven't yet taken into consideration for our design, and that's the fact that each of these pieces is going to be cut out of a different color of MDF. So that's going to have to be different cuts on the carvey. To do that, I am going to create an individual work piece for each color that I plan on using. So the puzzle pocket is going to be black MDF. For the puzzle insert, we're actually going to have five different components. If you look at it, we have the long, thin outside shape. We have the headphones, the light bulb, the mouse, and the book. And each of those are going to be four different colors. And one of those colors will be repeated in the outline. I think I'll probably use the yellow so it will pop on the black background. So let's go ahead and do our yellow piece first. Now easel does have a handy little control to help us visualize what exactly we're doing. So if you click into MDF, you can actually change the color on this one to yellow. Okay, and then we're going to get rid of any of these design elements that we don't want to cut out of yellow. So I'm gonna do the outline and the light bulb, but I can get rid of these other three pieces for now. Before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this a couple of times so that I can make my red, green, and blue pieces as well. 
you'll notice that because of all of the editing we've done to our image, the individual components are no longer able to be selected independently. So it's a good thing we saved our original SVG file up here because we can easily access the individual design components that we need. So because this outline shape is not serving our purposes, we're going to delete it. And we are going to bring down the parts of this image that we want. So the yellow parts are going to be the outline and the light bulb. Select both of those and just copy and paste and bring those down into your work plane. Then we are going to go back to our inlay generator. We're going to re-enter the values of our bit and our tolerance of 0 0.045. And we got it. Easy as that. So we don't need this piece. We only need the outline piece. I'm going to adjust my tabs a little bit. So there's our yellow cutout ready to go. Let's rename this work piece yellow puzzle insert and we'll move on to the next one. Next, let's do red. We'll go ahead and rename it red puzzle insert. And we'll go through the same exact process to get the red piece. We're going to be selecting the mouse to be red. Okay, so I just copied and pasted that component. I'm not too worried about the inner detail of the mouse. This is just the overall puzzle piece. The detail will actually be carved inside the pocket. So I'm going to go back to my inlay generator. And done. All right, and I don't really want to waste too much of this piece. Let me go ahead and change that to red. So I'm going to position my shape toward the corner of my red MDF. I do want to leave enough space to be able to get a clamp on right there, but I don't want to waste too much of this perfectly good material that I can use for another project in the future. And I don't think I need four tabs for such a small piece. I'm going to take it down to two and we'll put one on the inner part and one on the outer part. Let's do our green piece. You guys are going to be so good at using the inlay generator by the time you're done with this project. Green puzzle insert, green MDF, going to select the headphones for our green piece. So just copy and paste and bring that down to the material and run the inlay generator on it one more time. 0 0.0625, 0 0.045 tolerance, and import. You do want to be really careful not to accidentally resize any of your shapes as you're doing this because that will affect the size of the bit that we set when we were doing the inlay generator. So it is important to have it the correct size before you do that. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to reduce the number of tabs. We'll put one on the inside and one on the outside, and that should be fine. Okay, now finally, blue. The blue part is going to be the book icon. I like to keep all of my files very organized, so I do take the time to rename everything, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And again, I'm not interested in these two inner trapezoids that make up the book cover because those are going to be featured on the pocket part of the puzzle. I'm only interested in this outer piece. So I'm going to copy and paste and bring that down to my material. Now you may remember the blue piece I'm using is actually a scrap from a previous project and I only have a little bit of free space. So I'm going to position this puzzle piece over in the upper right hand corner 
because I know that this is still a part of my material that is carvable. And then I'm going to run my inlay generator on it. And this is the last time we're going to be doing this. Okay, and again, I'm going to position it over here. Take away some of those excess tabs. Okay, and we should be good to go with that. Okay guys, that's it for setting up our file. Now it's time to carve. Now you'll notice when you go to hit the green carve button, it's going to give us a caution warning. This is because we are using a bit that doesn't have a preset. We had to choose other and enter in the diameter of the bit that we're using. And so Easel is just letting us know that these settings haven't been fully tested and so it's just their kind of warning that you need to be careful and keep an eye on it as it's going. But we're going to leave it on these default cut settings. We're not going to mess with that unless something goes wrong. And then if your carve goes poorly, you can evaluate whether you need, you know, a higher feed rate or a smaller plunge rate, depending on what the malfunction looks like. For now, we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to go with the default and see how it looks. I'm going to go clamp my first sheet of material, my black MDF, to the carvey waste board. And then I'll come back here and get the carve started. Now that I have my material clamped to the carvey and the correct bit installed on the machine, I'm going to go ahead and confirm. So guys, I wanted to show you the final puzzle now that it's completed its carve. I do plan on putting it back in and doing a straight cut down, down this edge right here so that it's more of a square shape. But all of the pieces cut very nicely, didn't break any bits, so that's always a good thing. And they fit on pretty easily. There's plenty of wiggle room for the puzzle pieces so that a child could easily do it. And that's because we used a large tolerance when we were creating the inlays in the generator. That 0 .045 number that we kept putting in over and over again made this space between the puzzle pieces and the pocket. So here's our final little piece to our logo puzzle. And ta-da, I love it. What do you guys think? Guys, let me know. If you have any trouble designing your own puzzle, I'm happy to help you out virtually. And when the learning labs open back up to the public again, I would love to help you in person actually carve out all of these designs that you've been working on in the meantime. So thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.